Right, yeah, that really looks. That really. Looks. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> this is a different computer. On this screen is is really very nice. This is this is a computer that someone got for our youth ministry, and it's awesome. And we're using it today. So, um, but there's a lot of it's. The screen is so vivid that I know, right? You, like a, a mirror detail. almost. Yeah, so <laughs> it adds a lot more detail. So. Anyway, uh, hopefully we're on. One well, nice see people yeah, comment, then we'll see. It says that we've been on for 22 seconds. <laughs> Seven seconds, actually. Seven seconds. Of the, oh, yeah. So okay. we're good. Okay, good. Well, good morning, everyone. We're going into a conversation today about about uh, Jesus before Pilate. Uh, that's in chapter 27, verse 11. So we'll be going into that if you want to get your Bibles and open them up to 27, verse, chapter 27, 11 of Matthew. That's where we're going to be. So um, anyway, we'll be there for a couple of a couple of minutes this morning, um, and we'll talk about what all that means. This is a, a wonderful day today. we got sunshine here in Southern California. And it's nice today. And it's, it's cool. Nice. It's not going to be really, really overheated, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, we had 100 and, that was 152 days in there somewhere, I don't know, of, of temperature over 100 degrees. Yep, lots of days of heat. Yeah, and it was pretty warm. It's warmer than usual. Well, there's Niall. <laughs> <laughs> Niall just drove by our window, so there's Niall. Anyway. So we hope things are going well for you today. We hope you're having a good day. You know, when I first moved here, talking about the, the beautiful blue sky, when I first moved here, I, I couldn't stand it. I, I walked outside about after two months of being here, a little maybe a little more, I thought, man, where's the clouds? I miss the clouds. There's not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> but you get used to all this, all this beautiful blue sky, I guess. So anyway, I haven't said that in a while. <laughs> So, anything that you would like to pray about this morning, Pastor Uriel? Anything on your heart, mind? Um, really, I think uh, it's the same thing we've talked about, um, just for the time we're going through. And um, I think, really, I think for the outreaches a lot of churches are doing next Saturday, or I think they've even started already as far as for, like, uh, an alternative to Halloween. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. I've seen that, and we pray for that, you know, just for that. It would be such a great time for churches to be a light for for jesus christ yeah we have one what do you, do you want to tell us about what we're doing yes on, yeah, um, this is going to be really fun it's really cool a week from this uh saturday we're on gonna, the 31st on the 31st we're going to do like a drive through harvest festival where we're going to show the movie the great pumpkin uh, well yeah, i don't, I don't know how we're going to show that because people are it's going to be on a big through. screen we're going to yeah. put it on a big screen. Yeah, but I don't know how you're going to be able to watch it as you drive through. So, so this is going to be interesting because well, yeah. we you can't stop. You'll probably just see pieces of it, I would think. Yes. But it's but it's the Charles Schultz, the Great Pumpkin, and and I don't know if you know this about Charles Schultz, but he was Church of God. He saw, oh, this, he, I did not know yeah, he was. Yeah. He was Church of God. He was a <laughs> holiness guy. He loved Jesus. He was a he was a he was a really a wonderful believer. And um, that's why you saw everything he did. All the stuff was really wrapped around the gospel, and the Great Pumpkin is really a, the gospel story. Yes, and it's and it's really very interesting. Um, and and then you won't see it this year on. You used to see it every year on on network TV. I remember as a kid watching yeah, it a lot on yeah, CBS. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. yeah. Presenter. You won't see it anymore on network TV. And the reason you don't see it on network TV is. Um, the when after Charles Schultz passed away, passed away a few years ago. After he passed away, his family sold uh, the rights to Charlie Brown to Disney, and so now you can only watch it on on Disney um, on their uh, app channel? channel. Yeah, the yeah, Disney Channel. No wonder. So you won't be able to find it anymore unless you find it there. So that's too bad. Or you know what? I wonder if you could go on YouTube or something. Oh, sure. YouTube has everything. Yeah, so you yeah, might be able to pick it up everything. there. But it's a great story. So you did. But Charles Schultz was a Christian, and he wanted to present the gospel in a different way. I figured out now, looking at this, I don't know why I didn't figure it out earlier, I figured out why we have such such a screen, because you have a yellow shirt, and that yellow shirt is right in my view. Yeah, but right in my view from here, <laughs> all I can see is Hurley in that yellow shirt. I can't even hardly see myself. That's what I'm seeing. Uh, so anyway, that's why we wear black usually. Uh, oh, yeah. It, but you can still wear That's fine. But that's why we wear it so it doesn't reflect back like that. But I, gotcha. on this screen, though, on your phone, it looks great. I don't. You don't see any of that just yeah. because it's on the, the, yeah. 
the glass on our computer. That's the. It's a little distracting to me. You're men in black. That's I got to figure that out. I got to figure out. I get past that distraction. Sorry. Anyway, so yeah. So you, we were talking about I, I led us astray. No, that's right, but they, they, you're gonna drive through. Yeah. We'll be passing out candy. Um, yeah. Then we have some toys for the kids, and so. You know, it'll be really neat. I'm sure they'll have information about the church and the yeah. gospel track. So it'll be kind of nice, you know, just to do that. It'll be a safe place for yes. the people to come and drive through and get candy for your kids and that kind of stuff. It'll all be individually taken care of or in small bags. And there'll be several stations all the way along as you yes. drive around our church. So that way, that way we can have a safe place for our kids to go and at least have some experience of, yes. of that. So. Because, you know, you don't want, I don't think today, in today's world, you want people running around the streets getting candy and all that stuff. It's I know. Just, it's tough. It's really hard. It is. We used to, we used to have a harvest party here, uh, you know, and before all this stuff happened. And a few years before that, even we had 400 plus people here. There would be a yes. lot of people show up and, and we'd open up the whole church and it was a huge deal. But not able to do that this year. Not no, a lot of churches I've been watching, um, that's what they're doing is a drive through Harvest Fest time. Yeah, yeah, so. that's cool. That's cool. All right. Well, what do we have to do? We need to pray for that, that that goes well and yes. smooth, not just for our church, but we really want the gospel out. I, I also I also hear, I'm hearing a lot of stuff about people who are really are having difficulty um, in this time. Uh, it's starting to catch up to people, especially here in Southern California when they put us back to, um, you know, put us back in quarantine, basically. Uh, I, I go every day because I get I get this unlimited. It says unlimited coffee. You probably can't see it. Unlimited <laughs> coffee. Go every day and uh, I, they, they tricked me. I'll tell you, they tricked me. They tricked you. Yeah, yeah. My my Panera, so I got a Panera bread. Anyway, they they gave me a month free of coffee. I thought, wow, this is cool. So, you know, now they're charging me every month for it. <laughs> so I have to get off of it. But it's pretty cheap. You can get an unlimited coffee for like eight ninety nine or something like that. And there you go, Panera. There you, you go, free Panera. Advertisement. Got free advertisement. I got. <laughs> they should be giving it to me free now, right? But yeah. But if you get one or two coffees a day, like I drink a lot of coffee, you know. If I'm and if you're driving by Panera, my goodness, that's a lot. That's a pretty good savings for coffee, yeah. especially if you go out. It's. It's. I think it's cheaper than I could make it myself. So that's good. Anyway, so. I don't know why I brought that up, but anyway, it's just one of those okay, days today. Man. I had a reason for telling you that, and I don't remember now. It doesn't matter. So anyway, oh, I but you know, you go out and you you, you talk to people and you see people, and yeah. I go get my coffee every day. But I think people are are scared, and I think they're afraid. And and now, you know, this morning you go in. You, in the last few days, you were able to eat inside. Now that you just pick it up and go out, you can't eat inside. They got it all blocked off again. And I think that's people are really weary. People are oh, getting they are. just um, wore out from that. Um, yeah, and and I think you know I was talking to my wife last night, and we were talking about the election. And I had asked, "Did you hear about a particular individual who would raise taxes for our state?" And man, you should see the look on her face. It was just like I know. And m mind you, my wife is a teacher. She's at school all day. She's online, and that's that's draining. You know, yeah. you're on. She's on Zoom all day teaching kids, 180 kids. But when she comes home and then, you know, we we don't really talk about the news, but we stay on top of the news or things that we know will impact uh -huh. us and the people here in uh -huh. our county and state. And, but, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's weary and it's tiring, but, you know, it's such a time for us, you know, as believers to be that light, you know, right. to, to find the hope in Christ. And more of the reason, just vote, 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 you know, it'll make a difference. Yeah, and you and you need to. We I guess one of the things that I hope that we'll do is that we'll begin to not be so afraid of just telling people the truth of what we think. I mean, our truth is should be the truth of the Word of God, and we can't be afraid anymore. Yes, to tell people we have to look. Our world is in such a disarray that it's um it's it's really wary, and, and people yes. are just they're just wore out, and. Uh, and we really do need Christ. We need Him desperately. We need Him, and and it's going to be okay, but but it still is full of anxiety. And so, I think what we need to do is we need to get to the place where we are we are seeking Christ, seeking what He has for us, and and we need to practice those things that that most line up. You're not going to find any 
candidates that you find are not none of them are going to line up completely with what you believe in the word because you know you, they're just not they're, I don't believe I, honestly I don't think any of them are that, that honest so you should really pick the issues that they stand for and the issues are the the things that we need to think through so anyway yeah the, you know you had the good hope yesterday um I zoomed in when, when our one of our uh, parishioners that goes to church here that's a teacher here in India but it was good. It was a, it was about ten kids from a Bible club, and they decided to start a Bible club. And to hear them talk about the hope in Christ, yeah. it was just it was a breath of fresh That's air. It great. was so neat. Yeah. And so these are young people that are wanting you know to do this. They've got about twenty twenty five kids. They say, hey, look, we need to be right now such a time of a hope to our fellow peers. Right. So to hear young kids say that, it was made like that's that's so great. It gives you such hope that. You know, there there are those that that understand at such a time as this, we need to be the light for Christ. So it was yeah. really neat. It was wonderful. Yeah, and and, and you know, I we all we need to be praying for our kids. I I got a phone call last night. Um, one of my kids went to a youth group, and after the youth group, the the youth pastor called Shelley. She asked me if I'd call him back because she said there was some, some concerns, and I thought, oh, what happened? So. I called the youth pastor and he said, well, um, your child is, is, is texting that he wants to ki kill himself. He wants to commit suicide. Oh, wow. And I, uh, I said, well, thank you. I said, I don't understand that. I said, my child, um, this happened after the youth group, right? And he said, yeah. I said, well, this child is with my wife right now and, and they're going through a McDonald's drive-in to get a french fries probably. And I said, so and this this child doesn't even have a phone with him so i don't know what's going on and he said well let me check what's happening so then i said okay call me right back so i know what's going on so th he called back and he said well i'm sorry he said it's your child's friend oh. who texted it <laughs> but oh. your child's friend texted to someone in the youth group that they wanted to take their life and they were home right now and I said, oh, that's very serious. So we, yes. so, and he said, I don't have any contact information with that parent. I said, well, I'll get it. So I called that parent and told them, and then I got the, the youth pastor and that parent together to talk about, I think he's okay. I think that kid's okay. But, you know, it, 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 I don't know if it's serious. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's a cry for attention. I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm telling you, our kids are, our kids are not in a great place sometimes right now. Yeah. Even you know, I'm, I'm thankful to hear that we have kids like that that are doing well, and and my my child's doing okay. But but you know, <laughs> there's sure a lot of kids that aren't. No, you know? and, yeah, uh, it's really hard. You you know that better than most of us, right? right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, and that's something we need to pray for, definitely. Yeah. So I needed to spend some time on the phone trying to work all that out, be, you know, to have to see if people are okay, and and I, I hopefully they are okay today. So that's good. I haven't heard otherwise, so that's a good thing. And I, I told them if you needed me, call me. But if I don't hear from you, I'll know things are okay. And so, hopefully, that's what's going on. We, they figured it out. Parents and and the youth pastor figured it out. But you know, you can't take things like that. Um, you can't take them any any way except serious when somebody has that kind of conversation. So you have to try to deal with it right away. Yeah. So anyway, so we should pray for our kids and our families and and those kinds of things and. But man, I'll tell you, if the kids would latch onto Christ, they really would have the hope. So you're right about that, and it, and it really does make you feel good to watch that happen. Yep. Yeah, it does. that's good. It's really that's good. good. So anyway, that's those things I want to pray about today. Just that the people are weary and wore out, and people are having difficult times, and you know things are tough. So anyway, all right. Let's. Uh, anything else that you think of? No. no. All right. Why don't you start us in prayer? Sure. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this time. Um, Lord, we thank you. Um, as I look outside, it's bright. Lord, I love it. It's it's a wonderful day, another day you that you've made, God. And um, Lord, we we thank you for today, Lord. We uh, we thank you that <clears throat> only true hope is found in your Son, Lord. We thank you for you, Holy Spirit, that you live within uh, those who have uh, proclaimed Christ as their Lord and Savior. That you lead us to righteousness, Lord. We thank you for your Word that teaches, Lord, us. And in such a time that we live, Father, to read your words and how we can fulfill the scripture in our lives. And so, Lord, we pray for our kids. We pray for our children, our youth, our young adults, Father, adults, elderly, Father. In such a time that we're going through in our county, in our state, and through our nation, Lord, 
We just pray, Father, by the blood of Christ of those that we know, God, we pray for covering upon them, especially upon the, the young children and, and, and youth, Father, that as a lot of them are at home, Father, you know, just lot, you know, they're just at their homes, you know, locked up, man, few maybe get out, Lord, and I pray for them, Lord, for their parents who are struggling, maybe uh, that, that have to work or kids sometimes have to be left alone, but I would pray, Lord, that you would just watch over them. That you give them the hope that's found in your son, Lord. I just pray for those that you would just reveal yourself, God, to them. Know that there's a hope in your son, Jesus Christ. We lift up to you uh, this uh, young child, uh, youth that uh, Rick talked about. Rick in this individual's life, as many are just struggling, Lord. With It could be thoughts of suicide, depression, but, uh, of depression, but we know, Lord, that there's hope in you. And, and I know as we read into the word, Lord, that we're going to learn about such things of what Christ had to do for us so that we, we can find true hope. We lift up to you, Lord, uh, our country, uh, our state, at, at every level, Lord, that we would just vote for things that we know that are spoken according to your word. Um, thank you for such a time as this, Lord. And I pray that all that we do today that we glorify you. I pray this in the name of Jesus, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father, so much for letting us to come to you and pray today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the goodness that you bring to us. We don't want to ever forget in the midst of all this yes. chaos and anxiety. Help us not to forget how awesome you are. Father, I thank you that, that you allow us the opportunity to come to you, Father, when things are difficult. Mm -hmm. We do pray for those people that have asked us to pray for them, those people that have asked us over the last few days to lift them up in prayer. and. Lord, you know who they all are, and I'm thinking of them in my mind, and Lord, I don't want to leave anybody out. So, Father, I just ask that you would bless and heal, and that you would take care of those people that we have um, that we have prayed for and that asked for prayer over the last few days. Thank you, Father, for ministering to them. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for a time that we can open your word. Thank you, Jesus, for expressing your great love to us um, in this story that we're going to read today. Thank you for showing us how valuable we are to you. And Father, I pray that we really would begin to value life, that we would begin to value who we are in you. I pray that you would let us understand how precious every person is in your sight. I pray, Lord God, that you would show us how to live our life without prejudice and without, without being respecters of men, Lord God, but treating everyone the same. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us, Lord Jesus, to have uh, a sense of kindness, a sense of care, a sense of sensitivity uh, to people that were around. I pray, Lord, that we really would be invested in their life and become their friend, Lord Jesus, so that we can share the gospel of Christ. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be what you want us to be. Help us to be your ambassadors. Help us to be your storytellers. Help us to be truth tellers. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be the kinds of people who um, are willing to open up our mouth and speak the things that you want us to speak. Father, we ask that you would um, remove any doubt in our life and that you would allow us to have faith, the, even the faith of a mustard seed, to move a mountain into yes. the sea. We thank you, Father, for those kinds of things that your word says we can do. And we want to believe your word. Faith is believing, that, that believing for the things that are hoped for the things that are unseen. And so, Father, we pray for all of those things. We pray for our elections. We pray for our president. We pray for both political parties. We pray for truth to be told. We pray, Father, yes. for understanding to be had. We pray, Lord Jesus, for um, the Supreme Court. We pray for, the, for the, uh, the Congress, the House and the Senate. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the executive office, Lord, and all those people that work in those places. We pray that you would keep them safe. We pray, Father, that you really would today do something so miraculous in our lives that we can see once again how awesome you are. And I know, Lord Jesus, you scolded those that would say, well, you only believe because of the miracles. Well, that's not why we want to believe, Lord. We believe in you. Mm -hmm. But we ask, God, that you would still move your hand in a miraculous way. Thank you, Father, for glorifying yourself in those ways. Not that we need you to be, not that we need you to do anything miraculous today, Lord, so that we believe in you, but we just believe in you so much that we know that we can ask for those things, Lord. 
and we can be thankful and give you glory for that. And we, we just have, ask that you would help us to fix that all in our mind, understand how it's supposed to be, that you give us clarity of thinking today as we open your word. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, we have this conversation today of Jesus before Pilate. Um, what brings us into this conversation is, in, in context of what we're reading, is is the um, Olivet story where Jesus is, has had his last his last supper and he's gone into the garden to pray and he's gone through that whole dramatic scene with those not following are those not being able to pray with him because they fell asleep the peter james and john that three times conversation then judas comes up and he betrays jesus um, and jesus jesus calms the crowd and he very calmly even though they're they're coming with sticks and swords and stones and everything else and a roman regiment with the jewish people they, they're, they're already they've already colluded together to to come against christ and so all this has happened Judas decides that he is that he is in a place where he he doesn't like what he's done and he tries to give the money back with the 30 pieces of silver that he sold Jesus to the the chief priest and the Pharisees for and, and they wouldn't take it because it was blood money they throw it away he buys it they but they pick it up and buy a field with it and um, and now they're taking Jesus after they buy this field well somebody's gone to buy the field but they're taking Jesus, and, and I don't know if they buy the field right then. I doubt it. It's, it's a short period of time. But they do let, eventually buy a field with the money. And then and then while they're bringing Jesus from Gethsemane, they take him and they take him into the, the chief priest's um, residence, I believe, and they slap him and beat him up and, and make fun of him and, and say, you know, prophesy who hit you now as he's blindfolded. All that happens. Peter disowns Jesus. And now so that they can crucify him because they are Jews. They don't have the right to crucify him. Only the Roman government can do that. So now they take him before Pilate. And the reason they can do all of that, again, is because they had made a conversation before this whole thing ever started to, to bring the Romans in on it. And so they had a regiment of Roman soldiers coming with them because they had told the Roman, go the Roman authorities that this was a person uh, who was an insurrectionist who was going to try to overthrow the Roman government. And so they convinced the, the Romans to send um, the Roman Roman regiment with the Jewish Sadducees and Pharisees and Sanhedrin to come. So they all came together. Now they're bringing him before the Roman government so that they can continue with their plot to have him crucified. You know, it was interesting here. I was reading out of Luke. They, they switched the accusations um, when they bring him before Pilate, not that he was just who he's claiming to be, claiming to be God, but in Luke, they say they said we found this man misleading our nation, forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is the king. So now they're making saying you know, for the for the Romans to have a valid case, they even made up more lies. Yeah, that's part of what they trial, say. Yes. That's part of what they yes. say before the Romans. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Grab that. Grab that again when we get to that spot sure. as we read through, because that's good. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they they do that. They they lie and and they're try, again they're trying to collude with the with the government so that they can they can have the government uh, crucify them because that's what they're that's what they're looking for. So verse eleven of twenty seven. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Now, again, one of the reasons I think, glad you brought that up, and one of the reasons I wanted to put this in context is because the, this really, ha that what I told you just a bit ago and what, what Ural just told you, that is the reason for this question. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you, are you going to be a person who's going to take up the Jewish nation and then take up, take up, um, sword and, and spear and yeah. take up arms against the Romans. Yes. That's what they're asking when they're asking these questions. Are you an insurrectionist? And and he says, are you the king of the Jews? Well, Jesus doesn't say he's not, So, but they don't understand what kind of kingdom that Jesus is going to yeah, have. Yeah, they don't. So what he says, Jesus says again, you have said so. That's the same answer, the exact same answer that 
that you can look for uh, for the high priest when they asked him yeah. if he was the son of God. He says, tell us. It, it says, tell us, uh, uh, are you the Messiah, the son of God? And in verse 64, Jesus says, you have you have said so. So he uses the same exact language that he does here with Pilate as he did with the with the high priest. He's saying, you're the ones who said I am. He's not denying it. He's saying you have said so, which is, means he's agreeing with their assertion. So he's agreeing with the assertion of Pilate here. He says, you have said so, Jesus replied. Uh, when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him. So so, so, the, so the, the, the Pilate asked him a question. He said, you have said so. Then the chief priests and the elders, they try to question him, and he doesn't say anything to them. He's already answered them, like I said, in verse 64. He's already done his conversation with them. So so he's not. they try to come against him again. They try to make it look like he is an insurrectionist, and he's going to take up arms against Rome. But he does not do that. He, he doesn't say that. You know what's funny here? Yeah. In John, it says when they brought him to the headquarters of the Roman governor, his accusers didn't go inside because it would defile them and they wouldn't be allowed to celebrate the Passover. So that's right, kind of right, interesting. Right, right. <laughs> so they had already asked their questions, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, then Pilate asked him, don't you, don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? So he's saying, aren't you, aren't you hearing what they're saying? So there must have been some kind of questioning here. Um, and and Jesus doesn't answer them. And, and Pilate's response is, why are you not saying something? Why are you Why are you not talking? Why are you not telling us what's going on here? What What really is your intention? And And Jesus just isn't going to tell them. He says, "Don't you hear test Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you?" But Jesus made no reply, not even a single charge, to the great amusement uh, uh, amazement of the governor. So the governor was just like dumbfounded like why are you not answering yeah. yeah and then right after that it's not meant it's not mentioned in this account it says that Pilate um well turned, in Luke it says that it's I'm sorry Luke I'm sorry and Luke it says he that Pilate turned to the leading priest and to the crowd and he said I find nothing wrong with this with this man right but then they keep insisting that he is causing riots by his teaching wherever he goes right. all over Jerusalem Galilee and yeah, that, that's, the, that's the accusation. The accusation is that they're accusing him of being an insurrectionist. He's causing yes. riots against the government. He's trying to... So that's found in Luke. You can look at Luke's account of this and see yeah. what it says in Luke. Um, so now the governor doesn't know what to do. So the governor thinks, ah, I'll be wise, and he chooses something different. So this is in verse 13. So we've, we've read 11 and 12. That's what we've seen there. And I mean, excuse me, and 13 and 14, with 11 through 14. Now this is in verse 15. Excuse me, I, I misread that. So, so he thinks he's wise. He thinks he's got, he thinks he can get out of this because he doesn't, I don't think he wants to, it wants to do anything about Jesus here. No, yeah. And I believe that because they wash their hands of this. Let's look at verse 15 now. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one of you, which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who was called the Messiah? Well, he thought, the governor thought they would choose the Messiah to be released because he had he had been out there. He had been doing healings. You know, he's he's a favorite of the crowd, he, all that. But and Barabbas is a true insurrectionist. He's oh, a yeah. true. That's what he does. He's a, he's a he's he really is a one who starts riots and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so what which one should I release to you? He thought he had it. He thought ah, I'll get you. You know, and I'll let the crowd choose, and then you guys will have to deal with this again, because I don't want to do this. I think that's what he's thinking. So, uh, for he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. So he, he, he was not stupid. He figured it out. He figured out that if Jesus was around, they would lose their, their influence. Yeah. Right? And so he said, it's because you, you don't want to lose your power. So I'm not going to help you with that. 
He doesn't. He's. He goes. This guy is not guilty. I don't want anything to do with it. Basically, he's saying. So, who do you want me to release to you? So, while Pilate was sitting, this is verse nineteen. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Now, this this woman had a great deal of um, a great deal of you could say a great deal of discernment. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. That's what a lot of people think, but I just want you to watch this. Don't. This is what she says. She says to her husband, "Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him." Well, look. I, I have. I when I first read that, the first thing you start thinking is, "Huh." She must have been really discerning. She had a dream, and God God told her he was innocent. Well. That dream could have come from someplace else too. God, that dream could. So let me let me tell you why I think this might be. This might be a dream not from God, but from a demonic place. Let me tell you why. Now some people are, hear this one. some it's people aren't going to believe this, but just think about this. I just want you to grasp this. Look, what did Jesus come for? He came to die on the cross. Yeah, <laughs> and she's saying, "Don't put him on a cross." Oh, I get what you're going with it. Yeah. Gotcha. She's, it's like Peter. We'll never let you do this. That's a, that's a different spin. <laughs> uh, but, well, just, but think about it. Think, yeah. think about the message. That is, yeah. It could be. That's a, that's a great <laughs> thought. I never thought of that one. I, I just read through this. I thought, wait a minute. She's trying to stop this from happening. I, I always thought like maybe she had the dream that God had given her that she is going to die that he was going to die on the cross but it you're right that's 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 one of those that's a, like what we talked about uh, Judas yesterday that's, that's yeah. a great I great don't debatable. know sometimes yeah. sometimes you got to read through the word and just think about it just spend some time on it you could come up with some bad interpretations I'm not saying that's the right interpretation yes but but this is what I want you to do why do I even bring that up. Because what I want you to do is I want you to think through this and pray over and ask God, what does it really mean? What is does it mean this or this? What is what is what is going on here? Either way, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't change the story at all. Yes, but but it's just something that's interesting for you to think about. I kind of have the feeling, if if you look if you look like what's John nineteen thirteen say? That's that's kind of the same story, I think. Maybe if I'm thinking right. Let's see if I'm thinking right. It's a, that's one chapter. Okay, here we go. Nineteen thirteen. It says, "When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out out to them. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat on the platform that is called the stone." pavement in Hebrew called Gabbatha. Yeah. It was now about noon on that day of preparation for the Passover and Pilate said to these people, look, here is your king. That's uh, 13 and 14. Yeah. So it's the same conversation. We don't have this, we don't have this recorded that his, the wife comes and tells him here. What about Luke? Does it say anything in Luke? Luke. Or, or Mark? I don't think it does, honestly. I don't think it does. So this is, I think this is the, maybe I'm wrong, but I, if I read it through and I... I don't see it anywhere else. I think this is the only place that, it, so I can't compare it to any place else to see what's happening. I can com I can compare stories, some of the stories, but I, I don't compare, I can't compare this specific thing. But we do know because of Matthew... Yes. That the wife came and said, don't have anything to do with him. I had a dream and he's innocent. Well, I think the dream is right. I don't know where the dream comes from. But even Satan would could tell her that uh, that yeah. this isn't because and, and Satan it, doesn't want him to go to be crucified. And he wants to kill him, but yeah. he doesn't want him to be crucified. And it makes for a good um, uh, view in that she had a nightmare. Right. So, you know, yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, 
that's it's a great, I don't know. It's, a, it's a great perspective. I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm just just a thought, so yes. you can think about. It. Okay, verse twenty. So we know this. She, we know she has a dream. We don't know where it comes from. Doesn't say, but we know that it pronounces Jesus innocent, and we believe most traditionally we believe that it's from a dream from God, that God was telling her that he's innocent. Yes, yeah, the only one that talks about it. But, but. <laughs> For him not to have anything to do with it would mean that that he he had to figure out a, God had to have a different way to get to put him on the cross because the Jews couldn't do that. But yeah. and he does. Watch this. But the chief priests and the elders, verse twenty, persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. So he thought he was going to get away with it. He thought he had a way to get away with it. But again. God's purpose prevails no matter where this dream is from. That's why I said that, honestly. Because yeah. I want you to see that God's purpose, even even when, I don't know if she was supposed to tell her husband this or not. I, I don't know. It's not in any other Gospels that I can find. And, and the point here is that even Jesus, even Jesus, when they try to even stop him from going to the cross, God knew he had to go to the cross. And so somehow this young this this king decided he had a thought that was going to be really good i have a lot of wisdom here i'm going to say which one do you want to choose and they chose the person he didn't want them to because yeah. <laughs> he wanted to not have anything to do with this now and, and how do we know that well watch which of the two of you want me to re which of the two do you want me to release to you asked the governor barabbas they answered what shall i do then with jesus who is called the messiah Pilate asked they all answered, crucify him. Why? He says. He's still arguing with the crowd. He does not want to do this. And, he, and I'm sure his wife's dream had something to do with well, it. I don't want yeah. to do this, right? Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Jesus saw that, uh, excuse me, when Pilate saw, sorry, when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but was instead, but that instead an uproar was starting. He took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. <laughs> so he, I'm telling you, he doesn't want anything to do with this. Yeah. He does not want to see Jesus crucified. But Jesus has to be crucified. He has to go to the cross the, to fulfill the prophecy. He can't be stoned with stones. He can't. Be, he has yeah. to go to the cross. I, I, I'll think about is what what is running through Barabbas's head <laughs> that even you see a man who who's a rebel. He was a murderer, and you can see the love of the father right here. I don't know whether we don't know whether Barabbas acknowledged it or not. But I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> yeah, Barabbas is saying it's a good day for me to buy a lottery know, right? ticket. Right? It makes you wonder. Buy a lottery ticket. I just wonder if he really like. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he did. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. <laughs> oh, Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I mean, right? He's going. This is my lucky day. I need to buy a lottery ticket anyway. Go ahead. Sorry. Bingo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go, go ahead. <laughs> like, that's that was it. It was just you see you see God here. You know. Like we've said, scripture has to be fulfilled. But I wonder, like, what is going through Barabbas? And sometimes I'm thinking, you know, I'm like Barabbas. You know, I deserve death. I deserve, <laughs> to, you know, I don't deserve the love of God. But in Isaiah, the Bible, it says the soul that sins deserves death. But God, like you had said in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we're saved by the grace of God. And so I see myself sometimes as Barabbas because there are times I get so angry that I murder somebody in my heart. You know, and I say things and do things that are wrong, but in, in God's love and grace and mercy, he forgives. Sometimes I feel like a Barabbas, you know, but I see how God just, because of what Christ has done for me, God does no longer see me. He sees Christ in me. So, you know, I, I wonder if Barabbas, like, what was going through his head at this time? You know? Right. Right. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't know. He's he's a bad guy. He's done yes. a lot of bad things. He's, he doesn't have a conscience like like you you and I would have a conscience now. So I don't know what he's thinking, except that it's his lucky day. Yeah. yeah. That really, I don't know what else he's thinking. He's going to go gamble. He's going to go throw dice or something. Anyway, so so I want you to see something here. He, the, the pilot washes his hands. He said, "I'm innocent of this man's blood." Now watch this. All the people answered, "Okay." 
it, it, he, Pilate says, it's your responsibility. Watch, the, watch, their, watch what they say. Say, all the people answered, his blood is on us and our children. Wow. That's very... Verse 25 is a very frightening verse. It is. <laughs> right? Yeah. His blood is on us and our children. We'll take responsibility. Bring it on. I, th these are the same people just five days earlier or so who were screaming, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest as he comes in at the beginning of the week. These are the Very same people. fickle people. These are the same people. And, they're, and they, they turned so quickly and they turned so violently on themselves. Yeah. Look, I mean, look, they, they just pronounced a curse on themselves and their children. That's, that is amazing to me. That, that's an incredible, amazing conversation. So um, they just cursed themselves. Basically, that's what they're saying. They're saying, you know, may we be cursed if this is wrong. That's what they're saying. And it, so, so God knew that he had to send Jesus to the cross. And he, he found a way to send him at the cross. Even if this woman's dream tried to keep him from the cross, God said, I'm sorry, he has to go to the cross. I was just reading a commentator was saying that when they did this, well, that you know, of course, they put judgment on themselves, uh -huh. and uh, that visited them in 70 A.D. when yeah, right. God destroyed the temple right. using the Roman soldiers. The very right. same people they turned to for help were the very same people that destroyed their temple. Right, right. Yeah, it, it, it yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to be careful. Yeah. You have to be careful with your words. In verse 26, there are words of life and words of death, and these were absolutely words of death to yeah. those people who were saying them. Verse 26, then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and headed him over to be crucified. Um, this, this, this one sentence, he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified, that one sentence is, is so full of um, drama and, and horrible action. Uh, in if you know the history of that, it's just it's just it's awful. It's horrible. Yeah, the yeah. the most vivid uh, visual that you'll see of this is uh, the passion. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's in the that one was I, when I saw it, I was crying like a baby. My wife literally had to cover my mouth when we saw it at the, at the mm -hmm. movie theaters. But you see, uh, it's just it's gruesome, you know yeah. of. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, yeah, it's really gruesome. Yeah, it you know, and uh, I you know, I don't want to make it. I don't want to dwell on that much. But yeah. but one of the things, and I think you've all heard this before, but he was flogged forty times. Um, most men, uh, if if they flogged any man any more than that, everyone died after forty. So yeah. you were close to death. Most some people did die before that. Um, some people couldn't take the forty, but th th there were le at the, there were tongs, leather tongs, and on the end of those tongs were were little tiny like little barbells that were tied to those tongs, little metal barbells, like you know, like two little balls on a on a with a piece of metal attaching them together, and they were fixed in such a way that when they hit the flesh and they pulled the tongs off, it would rip pieces yeah. of flesh off his back and so so he's already gone through just horrific things and now he does now he does, goes through this flogging this 40 40 40 lashes and um then after that jesus has to um has to endure um has to endure the cross and this is very i, I remember when i was uh, in in college um, we had a teacher there. His name was Dr. Hall. He had a continual headache for 55 years, but he was the sweetest. He was a New Testament teacher, a very sweet man. And man, he he is a he was a great New Testament teacher. And um, and he had a record. I wish I could find this vinyl album. I don't even I, I don't even know if it exists anymore anywhere, but. He had this record of a person telling the story 
from, and, they, and what they had done is they gathered all of the information they could gather from all the Gospels. And then they told the story from the viewpoint of Peter. And I was listening to this, and I was, I, I, I'm tears. I was bawling oh, my I head bet. off in class. And, and I mean, not everybody was crying, but I was embarrassed. I was crying, so I couldn't stop crying. I, 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 you just listen to what Jesus went through for us, and it is an amazing, amazing conversation. Yes. And so here he is; he's getting beat up. We, um, yeah. One time, I did an experiment. Well, not an experiment, but I wanted the kids, the youth, to understand what it cost. And what we did was we blindfolded them. And, and you beat them up. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I wouldn't sorry, be here. Folks, that was I'm the case. You, I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> but we had, um, we started playing music through the speakers. Oh. And oh you heard, all they could do was hear. And then some of us were on stage adding more effects to it. And the kids were just falling their heads off. There was like, I didn't realize what it costed God, yeah. you know, and for what Jesus did for me. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, it's 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 powerful. You know, it's something that's it's a great reminder for us to remember that it costed God everything; it costed us nothing. Yeah, yeah. He he certainly paid a price yes. for our sin, and the Bible says that by His stripes you were healed. I've I've always struggled with that because this is the stripes, <laughs> yeah. uh, and and I, why did God? have to take that punishment upon himself, his son. Why did God have to take that so that I could be healed? Only thing that I could think of is that sin is so awful that um, he even says, look, if you can't stop sinning, poke your eye out. If you can't stop sinning, cut your hand off. If you can't stop sinning, do those things. And I don't think he means literally, but he... But what he means is sin is so horrible that you need to see the devastation of it. And what Jesus was paying the price for, we have to remember, was our sin. Yeah. He wasn't paying the price for his sin. He wasn't going through this because he had sinned. He was going through this because we had sinned. And, and because of his taking my place and exchanging his holiness, he gives his holiness to me, and he puts and he takes my sin upon himself. Because of ex that great exchange, um, we can be healed, and that's that's what I think it means by his stripes we are healed. Because there's a great exchange, and because of that great exchange, we can be healed. Because he took all the sin of the world and he dealt with it in this horrific, horrific moment. And it's more than one moment. It's not just like a blink of the eye. It's 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 three. It's 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 a horrible, horrible hours full of torment. It's, it's about yeah. nine hours. Yeah, yeah. Hours that just took torment. place. Yeah. And you know, the 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 great thing is, this is the love of the Father for us. Yeah. He's saying, look, my anger towards sin, with I this his wrath, of his sin. wrath yeah. was put upon his son. And knowing that, see, that's the love of God that he has for us, that we don't have to go through that. Not, yeah. There's also the warning for us, you find in Romans 1, that God loves you. And if if you say you want to deny him, not follow him, God says, I love you enough that I'll let you do what you want to do. I'll give you over, you know, to your sin. But there's the warning that's there for those who deny Jesus Christ. You know, we've always said this, God is a holy, God is a, has a holy love, but he's also... He's a, he's a God of, uh, of justice. His justice, justice is a holy justice, so sin must be punished. God desires no one, no one to be in, in eternal darkness, but to yeah. know his son. But the result is, if you choose not to, you know, to allow Christ into your life, <coughs> the result will be is eternal separation from God, and God desires no one right. to be in such a position. Yeah. It, you're right. That's true. That's the gospel. But, it, and he, and he, again, here, he, he takes all of our stuff yes. on himself. That's the reason for this. Yes. Yeah. That's it's God's wrath laid upon Christ for our sin. And um, 
And so that's just this is just part of that which happens to Jesus. The other part is is he was flogged and handed over for crucifixion. Those are the two parts. So he's being flogged here. Um, Matthew, or, uh, excuse me, Mark fifteen, Luke twenty three. You, you can look and see. Those are the places yeah. where it talks about it. Um, the soldiers mock Jesus. So so they beat him up just in, within an inch of his life. But but he can't die here. Because he has to go to the cross. Um, then, the, then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. So they, they stripped him naked and they put this beautiful robe on him. And then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. You know, we have, uh, here in Southern California, we have lemon trees. <laughs> and those lemon trees have some big thorns on them. Have you ever yeah. noticed? I've gotten some of those on Yeah, me. Yeah, yeah they, we've stuck ourselves. I've stuck myself with some of those thorns. But it's the kind that's the kind of thorn that's on this this that they're shoving into Jesus' head a couple inches. So think about that. I mean we can get a visual of that because we've <laughs> we've picked lemons off of trees. If you've ever done that, you know what I'm talking about. And there's there it's you've got to be careful. So anyway, then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how they could, that he could even stand after being beaten. And I don't know how he could be even upright to go through that. Uh, then they uh, knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail the king of the Jews, they said. Yeah, they let's... spit on him and took the staff and stuck it, struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. You know, the thing that people don't talk about when this says they stripped him, he was literally naked. Yeah, they stripped him. And so that's that was like the most form of public humiliation on top of whatever they were doing, what they were already doing to him. Yeah, it's, it's just not a pretty picture at all. So if you look at if you look at all this when they spit on him they struck him on the head over and over again with the staff it wasn't it wasn't light touches i mean they were hitting him hard how he endures all of these things and doesn't die here i don't know most of us i don't think would be in any kind of physical condition to be able to handle all of this um it's a very, very brutal and ugly mess with blood all over the place. Um, well, but they mocked him and they put his robe back on him and then they sent him to be crucified. Uh, they led him away to be crucified. So that's all that happened before the cross. <laughs> um, before the cross was was we sometimes I know we've seen the passion and that kind of stuff and yeah. sometimes it moves us and sometimes it doesn't because we know it's just actors and we know it's a film and but um, my prayer is that we remember um, what Jesus went through for us because. Um, <laughs> Because it's not just a small thing. No. The ugliness of our sin was... <laughs> the ugliness of our sin when placed on Christ was awful. And what happened to Jesus was awful. Because the wrath of God, the Bible says, was poured out on him. The punishment for our sin was poured out on Christ. And so uh, that's what you're seeing, even up to the time of the cross. 
And some people would say, well, at this point, our sin hadn't been thrust upon him. Well, that may be true because later on, one of the things that Jesus says on the cross is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And a lot of, a lot of people think that that's the point that our sin was thrust upon Christ. And, and that may be the, the exact moment that it was. But all of these things happen to Jesus because of the wrath of God being poured out on him because of our sin. He may not have worn the sin of mankind yet, yeah. but these things happened because he exchanged his holy life for our sinful life. Um, so we have to remember that. I think of when when you make that decision to follow Christ, you know, think long and hard what it costs. The Bible says you were bought with the price. And so when you choose to follow him, Christ would always say, you know, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross, then you can follow me. So know that, that when you choose, you know, this, your life no longer belongs to your own, it belongs to God. And so you need to consider the cost of when you say this, you choose to, that decision to surrender your life to God. Remember what it costed him. And it's one of the things when I was a young, a young man, I didn't understand this. A person came to me at camp and said, well, you say this prayer, you'll be saved. But it was never explained to me, like what we're explaining right now, what it costed him. The gospel was never explained. And, a year, and there was no change in my life. But it wasn't two years later, my brother explained this to me. And I'm like, oh my goodness. This is what it costs. Yeah. This is why I have to fully surrender. And then I made that true understanding mm. of, okay, yes, I have to consider the cost before I say yes to him. Right. And so this story is a great reminder for us to know, look, it costed him everything and us nothing. Well, so far in his life, it, it's cost him a great deal. Yes. It hasn't cost him it, it'll cost him more. More. Yes. <laughs> this is just part of what it costs him, and yes. it costs him more. So you're right. Um, verse 32 is w when they uh, they take him out for crucifixion. As they were going out, uh, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head were placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. So they mocked him here. The crucifixion was a horrible thing. Uh, if you'll if you'll feel where your wrist is here, there, there's you can feel there's two bones right here that separate, and that's where they drove the nails in this hand, because that would that's where they think anyway, because that would hold his weight. That would hold the weight. If you drove them up here, it would. It would so they think off. it's right through here that they drove the nails. I don't know if that's true or not, but some It would be because the radius yeah. on the connect. Yeah, so okay. some scientists yeah. say that it was through here, so it would hold right in here. So they drove, you know that, they drove nails into his hands, and they drove nails into his feet, and they and they hung him on a cross. And the, the reason that crucifixion medically is so 
ugly and and so deadly is that you can't breathe what what happens is when you're hanging on the cross you stretch out and your lungs come and they they kind of rest here up and so you can't breathe it closes off your airways so what you have to do is you have to muster the strength to pull yourself up and take a breath and then relax yourself so that so all, you're doing all you're doing all day long is pulling yourself up taking your breath and letting yourself down pulling yourself up letting yourself down after you get tired so you can't hold yourself up that's all you're doing all day that's why they would break people's legs so that they couldn't pull themselves up and they would just eventually suffocate they didn't have to break Jesus's legs because he he died before that but while he was on the cross and going through that horrific misery that physical pain and that horrific misery they were saying man if you're the son of god come down you saved others save yourself and the two to two thieves on either side were mocking him now it does tell us in another gospel uh, it, there's the other gospels are mark luke and john and all three of them have this story of the crucifixion Mark 15, Luke 23, and John 19. Um, they it tells us there that um, that one of those one of those uh, persons that was on one of the on the other side of Jesus, you know, said, "I I believe in you." Made yes. a confession for that, and he, Jesus said to him, "Today you'll be with me in paradise." Um, but in the beginning, it says that that uh, they also heaped insults on him, which were the, the two people that were on either side of him. So one of them must have looked and watched how he was handling death. What you know, we can go to a lot of places yeah. here and talk about a lot of things, and there's a lot of lessons in here for us, like how we handle death and all that other stuff. But this story is so important that I don't want to talk about the lessons that we can learn from it. I want you just to listen to the story. And I want you just to hear in your head the story. I want you to know what Jesus did. I want us to get that, what Jesus did for us. Um, we'll talk about the death of Jesus on Sunday morning. So we'll leave it here today because it's past 11 o'clock. Look, I hope you know Jesus. I hope you know that he loves you. I hope you know that he did, like Luke, like Uriel said earlier, I hope you know that you that Jesus loves you so much that he did all this. And if you were the only one that would have chosen him, if you were the only one in all humanity, you would have done it. Because he had to, this only way for whoever believes in him has eternal life. It's the only way. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So it's the only way. So if there was only one person, he would have done it. Because it's the only way. It, I'm glad it's more than one. I'm glad it's millions and millions of people that have, have said yes to him. But today, would you please, would you please just say yes to him? It's more important than anything else. It's more important than, than talking about anything else. It's more important than I, I wish. I wish I would have told you in the beginning to not even put any com comments up, but just to think about what's going on here because this is really the most important thing. You know, God loves you. God loves you a lot, and you are His favorite. And He wants you to remember that He did all this for you. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning online. We're not going to have church. Remember that. We're not going to have church. We're going to be online because um, we got shut down again. But the week after that, we're going to meet outside. Yes. And for those of you who said happy birthday, thank you very much. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't even want to go there, but I want to, I want to, be, I want to I acknowledge you and be nice to you. But, yeah. but really, I don't want anything to distract or take away from this wonderful story, the story of Jesus' love for us. God bless you as you ponder these events in the life of Christ for you. Have a good day. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I thought, oh, stop doing that. I mean, 